first of all, congratulations on everything you've done at this stage of your career to be so quick out of the box was just brilliant to watch. And you had a very good first weekend in Austria and very good results. So imagine you were very pleased with those. But then came the poll you got in race two for weekend two in, in Staria. And that poll then put you on the front of a grid where you were facing a dilemma between slicks and wets and, and it was getting wetter and wetter. Take, take the story up from there. I, yeah, I got a decent start, but Liam got, uh, Liam got a really strong start as well. So he came and he obviously had the momentum down to turn three. Uh, but I knew where my braking point was. I knew what my car and what I was, ca was capable of doing. So I knew I could brake at this point. And I decided to, I will go for this. This is my, you know, if I break early here, he will definitely break late. You know, I, I knew where I wanted to break. But how did you know? How did you know so precisely your breaking point? Because the tires weren't up for temperature and you couldn't have gone that quickly in the outlaps and the track was getting wetter all the time anyway. How did you know that exact point? I mean, it's just a feeling of confidence and feeling with the car. It's, I cannot, it's not like I have a fixed point. I just knew that I was confident that I could break where I did. And I knew that if I braked here, he had really had to challenge me to brake later. And even he was on the rubber uh, line, so he would have less grip than me. So I was very confident that where I brake was the latest point possible. If I would have gone in early, I might not have get the good traction because the, the track has a little kink. Um, so I wanted to go a bit wide because it's more flat and I could accelerate much more straight and with a better acceleration. So yeah, it in, in the end it came out really nice and it's just as I wanted to, to do. So I'm very happy with that. Obviously, very, very early days in your career, but how many wet races like that have you actually done? Well, in Formula cars, it's, I've done two years of German F4, so obviously we had a bit of wet driving, but in the end it was not too much. And last year, I think we had a few wet races, but also like maybe two, three a year, uh, something like that, a little bit in testing as well. But I think where the biggest difference comes is from me in karting, like, you know, looking at the weather app, whenever it rains, I go, you know, it's, it's a way to, to train and a way to, you know, when no, like 90% of the people at a go-karting track will go home when it rains because the car gets dirty, you get wet, it might not be as fun. Um, but I'm the opposite. Since I started racing at eight, me and my dad just kept driving, even though it was wet. Um, so I think it just, it just comes natural for me when you know, because I have always had that confidence in the rain. I was always happy when it rained. So in the end, I, I was pleased. Tell me now about the other side of the racing life, because so many young kids in your position, perhaps maybe not with your talent, but they find it so difficult to raise the money to put the sponsorship together. But this is obviously something that you, obviously you work very hard at it, as does your dad, but it's something that you're starting to get on top of, right? Yeah, well, since I was very young, I've been on my bike. I remember one story. I got invited to uh, F3. Uh, no, sorry. And I got invited to an F4 race in the USA with the Danish team at the Formula One Grand Prix in 2018, I think it was. Uh, maybe even seven. I'm actually not sure. But I had to go on my bike in rain at home in my little city. Um, there's like eight nine companies in the city so it's quite a small city but i i took my bike my dad told me we don't have the money but all you can do is go out and and go for it and so i i took my laptop i prepared like a, a presentation uh, on and i printed out like on paper with some pictures of formula one and me and formula four and different stuff and i went around the city you know on my bike in the rain completely wet when i arrived to the companies and said listen i got this one opportunity and you have the chance to help me, please. And, wow. you know, not, if, not all the companies helped me, but there was, all, there was, I think, three companies that helped me, and that was enough. That was all I needed to, to travel to USA, you know, like five days later. And it, this is just a small story of all the things we've been doing. And obviously, it's been very tough as well uh, doing it. But at the same time, it's just been natural. It's not been a job. It's been something that just had to be done because we wanted to go racing. So it's always been with a positive mindset. And that's why I think it, it has been possible both for me and my dad to, to keep working so hard because it hasn't been a negative job you had to do. It was something we wanted to do. Hi hey guys, we're here at Prema. The Prema factory is in Italy, nearby Venice. And this is here I come to prepare all the events with meetings, simulators and different things. 
So this is where all the magic happens. So now it's time to see the car. Let's go. So here is the car. There's 400 horsepower going over 300 kilometers down the straight and weighs about 650 kilos. I'm very proud of the design of the car. I really love it and I'm very grateful for my sponsors to keep supporting me and I think they look very good on the car as well. Um, when the Grand Prix was on on Sunday, were you back at the hotel or were you watching the race at the track? Uh, yes, so for round one, we stayed at the track watching the start and with the team. Uh, but on round two, Sunday, we were done a bit earlier. So I thought I would go home to the hotel to watch it on my laptop. You can see everything a bit more, a bit more closely yeah. and follow, you know, all the details in the race. So we watched it very closely from the hotel. Are there any drivers you particularly watch out for? Well, I, I have three drivers, which I take something from each. I don't think I, ha I don't think the perfect driver is an F1. I think there is some very good drivers. Uh, I think obviously Hamilton is doing an awesome job. He's always there. He's always delivering. I think Charles yeah. Leclerc really showed uh, what a strong mentality can do uh, with the loss of his dad and keep, keep working, keep going forward and being so young in, in Ferrari, beating Sebastian Fiddle. I think he, he has something special in his mindset. And then, of course, Max Verstappen, who just goes for it. And uh, yeah, it's all, it's, I take a little bit from, from everyone and try to, to put be, the best package around me. Because um, obviously we are all different and we all have our own talents and, and ways to work. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I respect them a lot. Well, thanks so much, Frederick. Safe onward travels to Budapest. Just do a great job again this weekend in Hungary. That's going to be well, well worth watching. Thank you so much. Thank you.